a good morning to you. Welcome to Asake Online. My name is Zenzel Ndewele and this is The Breakfast Club. Today in the show, we'll be talking to Dr. Temba Nyoni. He's a remedial therapist at Baobab Educational Assessment Center. Babunyan, welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Mr. Ndewele. Baobab is a, is a private organization um, that was set up to work with learners that have learning difficulties. By learning difficulties, I want to run away from people thinking that People that have learning difficulties are people that are dull or slow learners. They are not. Learning difficulties ranges from the, the challenge up to the gifted. The gifted can have learning disabilities too. Um, there are four objectives that our uh, Bible has. One is to provide awareness to the communities on what learning difficulties are. And number two, to provide um, assessment uh, uh, batteries for for the learners and number the third objective is to then devise um, intervention programs or remediation programs for for those for those learners and the fifth and the fourth one is then to also lobby for um, for learners with learning difficulties there are quite a, a lot of areas that we we come ac across in terms of uh, lobbying. We'll talk about them as we, as we go. This sounds like a, a technical area. I mean, your background, are you your teacher yourself? Yeah, I'm a primary course trained teacher, trained at UCA. And then with time, I just proceeded and uh, got interested in, in um, learning difficulties. Um, what I can say is that it's more of creativity um, because when you're looking at find the assessments have been done but then the bigger thing is then to how do you then intervene how do you then provide intervention uh, programs with assessment you find that there they are there's a team an assessment team that comprises of an educational psychologist a speech and language therapist an occupational therapist a social worker and a remedial therapist my role is more on the interface between uh, assessment, understand assessment, and understand classroom. The other four practitioners that I've talked about are more or less out of the classroom environment. Uh, take for instance the occupational therapists. They are not teachers, but they understand um, the use of space. And a, a speech and language therapist understands the use of acquisition of language, but then when it comes to when after that assessment, I have to take into the classroom and say, how then does this affect um, the child? How then do I come up with programs that will help the child to, to learn better? I know that in schools, kids will be learning and uh, probably they're not catching up at uh, the same level, depending on the, the, their challenges. But at what point that, that does the Baobab Center come in? You know, are you invited by the school or it's, it's the parent who says my kid has a problem? It's usually the parent who says my child has a problem. Um, the school, in, 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 in government schools, there's the school psychological services. So the parent may refer the child to school psychological services or to us. Um, being a private institution, we, 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 we don't have that backlog. You know, we, we can see the child faster. And again, in terms of expertise, in terms of equipment that we have, we are better resourced than uh, some of the centers that are available. But how common are these uh, learning disabilities in, uh, you know, school kids? They are, they are, they are quite, they're quite huge. Um, you see, the challenge that we have within, within our, our, our society, we we are not aware of what learning difficulties are. Um, we see a child who is, say, for that, I'll take a child who is attention deficit with hyperactivity disorder. This child has a challenge in terms of sitting and concentrating in class. And so this child is seen as somebody who's disturbing other kids without really understanding why that is happening. In other cases, you'll find um, a child, for instance, I have a boy that I see who who is tough, he doesn't understand, he doesn't have a concept of numbers. He knows that this is 12, this is four, but when you put those together, 18, he doesn't understand that. And so the teacher gets frustrated and says, but you know this is 14, 
this is 12. So why are you failing to put together? But our tests, our, our assessment patterns will identify that this child has um, challenges in terms of understanding the concept of the value concept of what, what is 12, what is 14. You know? But the teacher is not aware of, of, of that. And so in, in, in our awareness, in our teacher uh, development programs, these are the things that we point out to our teacher that you may think this child is aware of what they are saying or what they are looking at, but in actual fact they are. They are not. And so our tests then help us to actually determine where the challenge is. Right? Take, for instance, in, in, in reading and writing, you find other kids that uh, will reverse words, you read a word like so and read it as once, will have challenges with the P's and the D's, will have challenges in terms of, uh, you know, finding, uh, understanding a, a, a letter, I mean, the sounds, the different sounds, the teacher may not be aware of that, right? He may be aware that there is a challenge, but how do I intervene in, in, in terms of that? So when I, when I was in grade one, uh, I was left-handed. Right. So I used okay. to write from this way to that. So the teacher beat me up until I write. So I had a, I had a challenge. No, you, you, you didn't have a challenge at all. Saying to Teachers should be should should let the child be as as as, as, as they are. Um, you find these technologies that are there. For instance, we have a pen called the C pen. It it converts text to audio, and so a right-handed child. This this machine, it's a small pen. You can shift. You can change it from for a left uh, reader and a right-handed reader. You will swap from the left to the right. But a left-handed reader will write from the back, from the front to the back. So it's it's wrong for a teacher to say the child cannot use the left hand. So those are some of the things that we then what point out to the to the teachers. I mean, as we go around in assessing kids, you find that teachers still do beat the hell out of the child on why he's using his left hand. Yeah, I, I, one uh, program that or oh, one uh, your intervention or uh, but that got us uh, so interested in your work was uh, in Lupane, where you you know you assess kids uh, why they are failing at uh, you know in rural schools and one of the recommendations I think was the kids are uh, don't have, their uh, reading abilities are very low, you know. So is it because such situations is because of the environment? Is it because of lack of reading material or they have no interest in reading? There are quite a lot of factors that contribute uh, to that. Uh, you find that yes, a child may have learning difficulties, but in some in some cases, it's the institution that lets down the child. I mean, if for instance we go into a school, into a class, a grade seven class, in of say twenty kids, and you find that seventeen of those kids have some similar challenges, it means it's the institution that is is letting down the the the, the, the learner, and so. In other cases, especially in, in rural areas, you find that reading material is a challenge. Um, then our workshops will also then help parents to create, or schools to create their own reading material using what the child, you know, writes up a book, encourage the child to write up a book, their own book, from re, from pre, from ECDE, from ECDA, ECDP, help the child to create their own book. What's, Reading is supposed to be an intrinsic uh, uh, motivation. Um, you look at if a child, I mean, look at look at us, look at the selfies that we put up together. That's a bit of that's a lot of ecocentrism that that comes in. And so, if a child helps, if you help a child to put together their own book, they will read that book 30, 40, 50 times. And as a result, we now have a resource. Where in the class of 50 kids, we now have 50 books that these kids can swap around. I'm reading Devil's books, I'm reading uh, Zoas books, and so on. So that is a way of, of creating reading material where we don't have reading material. You know, in our system, mostly you find that kids will be learning 20, 30, 40. And uh, you can go from grade one up to seven, probably without the assessment. You know, are schools and even our parents aware of these, uh, you know, challenges or disabilities that kids might have, 
What is the level of awareness on these issues? It's really quite low. Uh, parents don't know the, 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 the levels. When a, 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 a parent will see a, a challenge at an early age, but then you'll, uh, you'll, she, he or she will assert that you are pushing that challenge to into the Bokulu Venu, Bokulu Akoe Velenjalo, looking at um, uh, he'll be fine with time, he's still growing up, and so on and so forth. And by the time they get to us, the child has failed so many times. But the ideal time to have these kids is when they're at an early age in the CT. Government, what, what, I, I, I'm not sure what the Ministry of, Aid, of um, Health and Child Care um, does in terms of bringing awareness to the parents. But there's a card, there's a health card, the yellow, the yellow card, where you find drawings on, on that card. You find uh, on that card there's a child who's uh, crawling, uh, walking, standing up, and so on. And so they plot a, a land graph. But if parents were made aware of the, of, of the true value of that card, um, they will understand that a child, they will pick up that a child has a problem at a very early age. I mean, if a child is coming up to three years and they cannot speak, they're going to talk, that shows that there's a development, a developmental issue, and that issue needs to, to be addressed as early as possible, rather than saying, no, we'll see, they're growing up, they'll catch up. That is a, is, a, is, a, is a challenge. Because when that child cannot talk, what is it affecting? It's affecting the language acquisition. It's affecting when he gets to school. Their language, their, you know, in terms of things that they have acquired in terms of language are minimal. And so that is what we are looking at in ECT, where we want to have the child getting as much as possible at that early age. But if it's not addressed at an early age, that becomes a challenge. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm actually uh, intrigued and asking myself how many parents really pay attention to that uh, graph, I mean, more, more like the developmental process yeah. of a kid. Because you go to the clinic and they will just tick or write whatever they write and uh, hardly do you even pay attention. And the nurses sometimes will not even, I don't think they even explain to parents that uh, these are the challenges. And we always have an explanation. I will put like, I put ukuluma so I make a lenjal. Yet you, you have a challenge that uh, is, is going on. So that is the issue where we, 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 we're looking at in terms of awareness to make the, the, the public and the, community, the, the communities aware of, of some of the intricate things that they need to look out for once their child is still growing. Instead of, instead of waiting until the child goes to grade seven and they fail so many times. I mean, if you get it, we, we have seen so many kids that even at grade seven, they cannot spell the word C to C with my eyes. They cannot spell the word C. I mean, you, you're looking at a total failure at grade seven. Because reading is key in that all subjects involve reading. Right? Even, you've, even if they are good in, in, in numbers, you'll find that those numbers, when it comes to story sums, they will have a challenge with that and so it brings down their, 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 their pass rate. Our, I know, our, our syllabus or our, our school curriculum, does it take into consideration these different levels of learning? I mean, we, we have a school and everyone learns and they, they move at the same pace, but do we have the leeway to say those who have challenges, then they, they learn I mean, separate maybe from others or they get an extra you know, lesson from others? Yeah, the, 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 our education system has those those uh, those measures. That's why you have uh, uh, remedial teachers in, in, in schools. But again, it's about uh, the empowerment because the teacher development part of it. Are they really equipped, you know, to 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 cope with these these kids? Because in some cases, in some schools, you will find that the teacher who's the remedial teacher is maybe a teacher who's just been punished, say, kill these kids. You know, but for me, I would say my best teacher should be in that, in, in, in that, in that, in that, run that program, because they are, they are good. They will understand. They are not leaving these kids behind. They are getting these kids with them as they, as they, as they go. But the tendency again, because of the numbers, because of uh, um, the cost. I mean, special education is expensive. 
And so the cost that is there may be another yeah, limitation to that. But for me, I'll then suggest that the, the, the corporate world get into, into, into full play because these are the future uh, uh, employees of, for these companies. And so they need to invest now in order for them to you know, get um, learners that are well equipped. I'll give an example. I have a client who, can, who called and says, can I come and see you? I said, yeah, that's fine. And when they came in, this gentleman and the wife sit there, and I'm thinking, these are, they are looking, they are coming in for their, for their learner. But the guy says, look, I'm 42, and I cannot read. I can only read up to grade three. So already this gentleman is already in the market, in the job market. And he says, I've got a good job because I, I, I understand numbers. I'm very good with numbers. But then the challenge comes in when I have to, have to read. Apart from that, apart from the work environment, it also impacts in the social social um, uh, social sector because the gentleman cannot go to church and, and read the Bible. When he said, I was by any verse, then he, you know, all of a sudden you have to say, I don't have a voice. Yeah. Yeah. And so you, 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 you find that there's a lot of low self-esteem within um, the youngsters and also the, the adults that have these challenges. Yeah, because my, my question I was going to ask you, at what, I mean, do we have a level where we say, no, we can't help? So do you offer these services at primary school, at secondary school, or you can go up to you know, university and even adults? We go up to, as, 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 as partners, our partners can go up, to, our, our test partners can go up to age 89. So anyone can come in and... So the age, uh, simplify for a layman, the age 89, what's, what's, you have levels. I know. Mm. If you're 89 years old, you can come in and we do an assessment and okay. provide a program for... for 89 years old? Yeah, 89 years old. Okay. We have tests that are suitable for... There are different tests that are suitable for different levels. Okay. Yeah. You find that maybe we have a test that takes in uh, kids between 4 and 12 years old. Then we have tests, same tests, but now at a different level, 4 to 14 to 18 and, and so on. Yeah. So you don't intervene, you don't come up with a program before you do an assessment. Okay, let me let me take you through the assessment process. Yeah. We 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 have what we call a pre-assessment conference where we bring in the, the, the parent comes in and says, um, I have a challenge. And the first question that why do you want us to why do you want us to work with this? Why have you come in here? So that the parent is clear on why where the child the, the, the problem is and the child's problem is the parent says my kid is failing he's not done very well in school or the teachers have referred me here and so on and so on then during that 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 that, that, that pre-assessment conference we collect all that data from where we ask the parent how what were the timelines you know did he walk at certain age did he crawl did he do that and so on and so on at all those ages once we then we have that we then look at it and say based on this which um, specialists do we need to do an assessment on this learner? Uh, say, for instance, maybe we would look at it and say, maybe we need an educational psychologist to do an assessment, and a speech and language therapist to do an assessment, and a religious therapist to do an assessment. These tests are biased towards their, 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 their fields. And so once they've done the test, we then get together and come up with one report that says this child is that the specialist found this, the specialist found that, the specialist found um, that. And uh, we then design what we call an IEP, an individual education program. Um, the individual education program has then has a team, what we call an individual education pro program team, which involves the parent, uh, the learner, the school, and the, 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 the relevant therapists that need to work with, it, with, with the child. Um, why is it important to have that, that team? Because the learner is key in that this is his program. He needs to have a buy-in. He needs to understand that I have a challenge and this is the help that I'm... Because if you ask a child, say, how do you want to learn? And the child says, ah, I'm, I'm comfortable if somebody reads for me. And I understand things better if somebody reads for me. 
uh, your risk to me. And so that way, you, you, you now understand, okay, this child is an auditory uh, a learner. He'll learn better in terms of um, when he, he hears. So when we bring up technologies, we then bring up uh, the C pen, which then you know you scan all the, the you scan the, the you you scan it and it will it will convert text to audio, or other programs like the Casual Three Thousand, where we scan the entire all the textbooks, um, and this is a computer based a way computer based uh, um, program. Or if a child, for instance, cannot write. You have, a, you, you, you have a program called the Dragon where you speaks and it, it speaks and it types for, for him. So with all this knowledge, with all this um, intervention, the, you, you won't have, you, you, you will conquer quite a lot of challenges that are, are there. Once we then have this team and we have a grid on, on, the, on, the, on the plan, we then run with the, with the, with the plan. It's key to bring in the school because Quite a lot of um, quite a lot of um, uh, extra teachers. I mean, extra lesson teachers tend to bring in work that is totally different from what the child is doing at, at school at that particular time. But it's good for if, especially if the learner has a challenge, for that continuity to have at home, at school, and at the extra lesson uh, sessions, right? Because you are looking at repetition, so that repetitious method it then helps the child. For instance, if you have memory issues, that repetition helps you know to lock down um, um, things. Yeah. So I mean, this means you've been talking about the learner, the parent, and the teacher. So it means the parent has a big role to play in terms of seeing these difficulties. If the teacher cannot pick at school, then the, the parent at home, you need to you know, focus on, on your child's work so that you can pick these uh, disabilities or these challenges if they are there. Yeah, definitely. You see, our education system has, 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 has sidelined the biggest, one of the biggest uh, stakeholders in terms of education. Um, learning starts from home, goes to the school, and continues at home. Take, for instance, the, the, the very good um, curriculum that we have now, right? Um, where it's inquiry based, saying we need the child not to just pour in knowledge, but you need the child to inquire, research, and understand so that they're able to then apply a concept that they've learned to other issues. But our parents, or our system, or schools in the, in the ministry has not brought the, 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 the parent with them. Take, for instance, a child, a child will have a, 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 a worksheet, right? And he takes that worksheet as, as home to uh, home. And the parent just takes that uh, worksheet, puts it on his phone, and sends it to the homework group. And we come into home and group and just give the, the answers. And the child goes back to school and gets 10 out of 10 throughout the year. But the child has not learned anything because there's no inquiry learning that has happened with that child. Well, why? Because the parent didn't understand why he has to understand. For instance, it, there's a developed one that I saw where you're saying, right? The idea is for the child to understand what into angel so that they're able to apply that to whatever situation that they come into. But as we will take that and say the child has not understood much. So the, the learning has been minimal in, in, in that. What we want is then take the child, let the schools, you know, run workshops for these teachers. I mean for these for the for the parents and what is what 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 are we talking about when we're talking about um uh inquiry based learning right and now because of that inquiry based learning assessment is going to be different there's now what we call a continuous and continuous assessment continuous assessment learning we yes, some color or something but does the parent understand that the parent doesn't understand 
So the parent has been so used to if the exam time. So they are always preparing child for the exam. Now what you're saying, I mean I've seen young couples on WhatsApp groups asking in the homework is the very because it's usually the most difficult. And people just contribute number one up to ten, the other one answers number one, the other one answers number two. And obviously the parents just copies the kids send to school and they pass but they've not understood do anything. And I mean, as we bring this program to close, we have the last year, and even now, some kids are going to school uh, for a week or so because of COVID. The parent has been at the center of learning. Yes. And yet the parent does not understand the method of learning. Yes. What does that mean for, for, for young, especially for kids, right? ECDA or ECDB and you know, lower grades. They're, they're, they're... They will have, they'll, they'll, be, they'll be frustrated. Um, at those lower grades, there's a lot that they're learning from home. There's a lot that the parent can bring in uh, in terms of helping their, 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 their young one. Every day that we look, we, Karis is cut off, say, say so, and we're already talking of a number line. Why should a child see a number line in class when a child can wear well, with the infe in a car, infe is a number line. When you look at infe, you are graduate, look at it. That infe is the infe in a car, you are also introducing the concept of addition. You are also introducing the concept of subtraction. You are also introducing, you are creating, look at it. And so these are things that are done at home. If the parent was aware of such things, there will be by the time I'm trying to see a figure into ECT, there will, there's a lot that they are learning. Look at how much shapes you can't even really single when you look at a slice of bread. The kids are eating single every day. You already have shapes. You have a triangle. You have a, you have a rectangle slice in the single. You have a triangle when you fold that. You have a triangle. I want to know about that every day. You see. You're looking at how you, as you call oh, fractions. Fractions, yeah. you have fractions in that. You at lower grades, you have counting. That was in the English, was in guy, and so on and so on. So, those are the key things. I'm a traditional games that you're learning that we play all around. By the time I'm trying to say I'm going to school, you understand it in woman three. You understand that I have to get three boxes. And so, if parents could use those things. So that we do at home. They have a lot. They can actually achieve more. By the time the kid goes to come into the class, and they would have supported the, the learner quite, quite a lot. I mean, uh, uh, lastly, how can uh, we, I mean, use these, because uh, you, you talk about traditional games, but these days people are, and everyone is trying to get their kid in, an iPad or a, a tablet that is maybe things that they don't understand. How can we use technology to put these games so that kids can, can use? Do you see the role in which technology can actually help kids? Yeah, yeah it's, it's quite, quite a lot. Um, why would you have Tetris? And we don't have Uara on 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 on, 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 on this gives room for the developers to come up with things that are based. I mean, for the learning has to start from a non to an unknown, right? And they are seeing these things. We are going to do Uara on on We are bringing in the concept of red night child and are looking at the force. Introduction of we are was not in China, so we jiggy queen, but nice of you put technology as a child. So it's those things that the developers that are out there should embrace things that we already have in order to 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 um to make learning fun and relevant to the kids. Well, learning has to be relevant. You need to give that child I'm a hook, some would do to mental hooks so that then he hooks. You know, who can the parent then is able to trans translate that into into a further look at it. It's good to talk about that, but nothing a lie, you know, in the real areas. How many of us, how many of our kids can afford them our smartphones? How many of our kids can afford them our, 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 our iPads and so on? So we cannot just sit back and say, we're we, we looking at the technology. 
let's use our own local technologies that are, are there. It's, it's, uh, uh, thank you very much for this uh, enlightening session. And um, I know people would want to ask where to find you, how they can contact you, and probably, you know, I didn't know my kid there's a, a problem. So are you available for consultancy and um, all those kind of things? Yes, we are available at 2B Bristol Road in Famona, which is just after opposite the uh, Music Academy. Uh, our website is www.baobabedu.co.zw and I'm available on 0779-04-3768.